Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Well, uh, I thought I'd do a bit more of an in-depth look at the uh, the power bank. Uh, I know John made a comment that it wasn't much of a review on the other one. Well, it wasn't really meant to be a review, it was just like a quick look. And is this going to be a review? Mm, possibly, possibly not. Uh, am I going to take it apart? No, I'm not. I want to use it. And that's why I bought it. Uh, I don't get sponsored by it likes a little or anything like that i don't get free stuff and i buy stuff because i, I want to use it all right just a few more things that i've, I've noted uh, it seems to be as soon as you plug anything in it'll switch itself on if i just plug in this as you see it switches itself on and powers itself which is a uh, quite novel So uh, what am I going to do today? Well, I'm just going to oh, switch off. I can't switch off now. Uh, I'm just going to talk about some of the specifications because I thought that was quite interesting. Come on, switch it off. I can't, I can't switch it off. And it may be the same for all power banks. I don't know. I've never looked, but I thought hmm, that, that's quite interesting because it's got powerful 5 200 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. Yeah, that's brilliant, and uh, yeah, it sounds nice and powerful. Uh, here's the instructions. Uh, loads of stuff. Uh, one thing I want to would like to say, uh, I did say about it does say you can actually use all the USBs at once, as long as you don't go over that uh, 2.1 amps, which. Uh, I basically said before you could either use this one or the other two but you can actually use all of them as long as you don't exceed the 2.1 amps so <clears throat> that's quite interesting but yeah uh, what I did find interesting is uh, it says integral battery is a 3.7 stroke Two five hundred milliamp hours, which yeah, we knew that anyway. Uh, basically, you've probably seen others on eBay. We're going to have the circuit board there and the lithium polymer there, so there's no point pulling it apart. We already know what's in these things. But yeah, I did, so I did some quick calculations because this has obviously got a boost converter in, and to get your five volts, you'll only end up with about if the boost converter was a hundred percent efficient you'd only end up with 3300 milliamp hours now if you just take the average of the boost converter is 90 percent efficient which it possibly could be uh, that's going to take another 300 milliamp hours off of us so you know i'd expect to get about 3000 milliamp hours so what am i what am i going to do with this today well it's partially charged uh i did just have it charging i don't know why that last light's flashing but i thought let's discharge it this may take a long time so i'm actually just gonna probably put it on charge and then uh, we let it discharge and see uh, what it comes out to right i don't know how well this is gonna happen i don't know if that's long enough now okay See if we can get that in there. Right. So what I've got is I've got my old balance charger stroke discharger. I've got it set to discharge. I've actually set a lead acid. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but it actually came up with a voltage I would like to stop at. So I'm going to say discharge at one amp. So that's half of its uh, rated power output. Uh, down to a point, hopefully 4 volts, I presume that means. Uh, let's see what we get out of it, because if it's even lower than 4, then uh, it may not be any good for, you know, USB work. I don't know what the lower limit on USB is. Okay, let's see if this works. It may not work. Check out battery. Okay, and now we... Uh, 
that pin seems very much in not to the end. Maybe I haven't got connection. All right, let's do that. Let's try again. Go on. Okay, we've got connection. Beautiful. Right, we're ramping up the current. Here's our voltage. What we just started to draw up, surprising, we're at one amp. We're at 4.89 volts we're ticking away all, all i'm going to do is if there if there is three amp hours in there this is going to take three hours and um, so I'll, i'm just coming back and let's see what it ends up as okay many thanks for watching catch you back in a minute or shall i say three hours if all goes well Okay, quite a bit later, and it's timed out. I don't know if the device switched off, uh, you know, low voltage protection. Uh, but the discharger showing 2,422 milliamp hours. Voltage was still at 4.85, so maybe that was the cutoff voltage. Could fire it up again, Let's see if we can get a bit more. Let's write that down. 2422. See if we can get some more. Discharge one amp. Okay, the device has actually switched itself off by the way. See if we can switch it back on. Okay, let's try again. No, it's not. No, definitely don't want to play ball now. So, you're going to call that it. 2,422 milliamp hours. Which, I suppose, isn't too bad. Bearing in mind, I did work it out. We probably get max 3000 milliamp hours. Uh, we don't know what voltage this would switch off at. If it's switching off at 4.85, which was the last reading on the discharger, there's obviously some capacity in there, but it's uh, been on the safe side. Uh, I mean, let us know in the comments what do you think about this uh, milliamp hours and how they quote it. Do other manufacturers uh, give? This type of quoting of like high milliamp hours but that's at the actual rating of the uh, cell inside and not at five volts i mean really they should have like powerful five 200 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery equivalent to 3000 milliamp hours at five volts in my in, in my thinking anyway uh, let us know in the comments because uh, i mean this is just one of probably many thousand that are on the market. Uh, they all quote it like that. Is it right? I don't know. Okay, many thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, I may charge it up again and discharge it because this is like the first discharge and see if we get a, a different figure. Okay, many thanks. Catch you soon. Hello everyone. Well, I decided to do another test. I charged it right up and discharged it. This time we got uh, 5,000, uh, sorry. 2,558 milliamp hours. So I mean, the, the the first charge we got 2,422. That was its initial discharge. Charged it up. Yeah, we've gained another hundred. I don't know if I charge it up again. Will I gain another hundred? Probably not. But yeah, it it doesn't seem too bad. Uh, let us know what you think about the way they actually uh, market these and you know saying that they're 5200 but that's actually the battery that's in it and not at five volts let us know what you think many thanks for watching hope it was a bit more uh in depth as i said before it's got two outputs 
like most of them, a 2.1 amp and a 1 amp. And you've got a charge port, and what is quite nice is uh, you've got two ports here, so you can actually walk walk out with any without any leads if you own an Android type phone. Um, all my discharging has, has been done with my IMAX B6 at one amp, and they seems to they, they seem to have coped with that. The uh, voltage fluctuated a little bit between about 4.8 and 4.9, and it never really dropped at the end. Uh, the box switched off to say it was flat, and as you can see, my end voltage was 4.85, so. Uh, it was good up until the end and I can imagine there's still quite a bit of capacity left in there but the electronics is saying uh, no you can't use it anymore okay thanks for watching hope it was a bit more interesting than the other one hi everyone uh, I thought I'd just check the results because something didn't seem right and yeah I did make a mistake I was actually presuming it was uh, 3.2 volts not 3.7 so I did a bit of searching and found some efficiencies as well. So I thought I'd just go through the maths. Right, well we know this is 5,200 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. So let's do the PIR, I always have to do them, I can never remember. Right, so what do we want? Right, so that will be 5200 times 5, I don't know what I'm doing there. IV, yep, yep. So that's 5200 times 3.7 volts equals, I did write it down here, 19240, and I would imagine that would be in milliwatt hours. So that's what's in our battery. Now to, now if the, uh, the boost converter was 100%, we could then say, uh, use the same formula again, come in and say 5200 uh, uh, is it over 5 equals, which would come back into milliwatt hours which equals 3848 that's uh, like milliamp hours at 5 volts at 100% efficiency. Alright, we know that a boost converter, I had a look up and they're typically 85% uh, efficient. So we can say 3848 times 0 0.85, which is the percentage, equals, uh, come on, I'll write it down somewhere. Do, 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 do. Come on, where did I write it down? Oh yeah, there it is. Three two seventy milliamp hours. Okay, so that's taken the boost converter in to effect. If it's eighty five percent efficient we should get that. Uh, the other thing we've got to take into account is the electronics will switch off fairly early and uh, I look up again and that's typically it leaves about 20% charge in. Uh, so it's only 80% usable. So we can do 3.7 or 3, 3,270 times our 80% which then gives us a value of 2616 milliamp hours. It's all approximate. So that would be about the max you would get out of the box 
obviously I mean it, these these two efficiencies it might be more efficient maybe less efficient may not switch off at 80% maybe 90% it switches off at maybe 70% that I do not know uh, but yeah approximate that's what I reckon you would get out and from our records before what did we get we got 2004 thirst charge 2005 it's coming up yeah I think it's in the right ballpark okay many thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe